Hey everyone, welcome back to Arcade Cafe. Um, I asked you all on Twitter with a poll, like, what would you guys like to see, and one person voted. Round of applause. Alright, alright. And I had one comment below saying they wanted me to cover The Legend of Zelda. And with Echoes of Wisdom right around the corner, I figured it's a pretty good time for a Zelda tier list. Now, as you can see from the selection here, this is probably the weirdest Zelda tier list I've ever seen. We're not just covering the mainline games. We're covering spin-offs, manga, cartoon series, ROM hacks, as well as anything else I could think up that is important to me. If that's cool with you, sit back and enjoy. So starting off with Four Swords, I have played a Four Swords game. I just don't remember which one it was. It might have been the Anniversary Edition. Um, I know for sure it wasn't the Four Sword Adventures on the GameCube, Listen. but somewhere I have played Four Swords. So I'm just gonna kind of put it here and not finished yet. I want to be fair to games that I haven't finished or haven't played, and they won't be receiving a ranking. Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. I own these um, on my 3DS, but I have not finished them yet. So they are going in not finished yet. The first Legend of Zelda, specifically the one on NES. The original Legend of Zelda is hard and it's vague. Playing this game without a guide feels almost impossible. I'll play the original version just out of respect every once in a while, but I'll fully admit that I've never finished the original version. But just out of respect, I've got to give this game a C. It kicked off the Legend of Zelda series, and Zelda wouldn't be here without it. But to me, it's just too cryptic and difficult to really go back to. This is the Triforce of Wisdom, Link. The Legend of Zelda the Cartoon series. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. The version of Zelda in this cartoon is probably one of my favorites. She's not some damsel in distress waiting for Link to save her, most of the time. In most episodes, she actually fights right alongside Link, fighting Ganon. And I think this version of Link is pretty cool too, despite the fact that he, he's a pervert. I'd like to know one good reason why I even stay here. Oh. Okay, so there's one good reason. <gasps> Looking good, princess. Especially from this angle. Now, do I think it's perfect? No. The writing is super cheesy, and every once in a while, I like myself a bit of cheese. Nice job, hero. Hey, excuse me, princess. The Legend of Zelda Redux. This is a ROM hack of The Legend of Zelda 1. It adds a ton of quality of life features. It makes the game more modern and way less cryptic. For example, if you were looking for a cave, normally in the original game, you would just have to know where the cave is and which part of the wall to bomb. But in Zelda Redux, the part of the wall that is the cave has a crack in it so you know where to place the bomb, like a modern Zelda game. The quality of life features, I think, really bumps this game up to a B for me. If you ever plan on playing the first Legend of Zelda, I highly recommend Zelda Redux. I promise you, you will have a much smoother experience. Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Hold on, pump the brakes. This is Tyler from the future, and I just want to say that it would be a complete injustice if I didn't include one of my favorite fan-made pieces of music, which is the completely redone Zelda 2 soundtrack by the wonderful Isabel Chiming. I listen to it all the time. I'll leave a link down below to the complete soundtrack, and I really want to play it while I rank this game. I think this game gets a lot of hate that it doesn't deserve. I've played the original Zelda 2 way more than the original Zelda 1 because I enjoy Zelda 2 more. I don't know, maybe it's just like the XP system. I also like the music more. I also think its combat system is way more dynamic. You can do way more than just attacking in one direction. You can duck and swing. You can jump and swing. You can do a jumping stab attack. You have to time your blocks. Fighting enemies in this game is like, is like a dance.
But also, just like Zelda 1, this game also suffers from being incredibly cryptic. You'll go to villagers looking for hints, and half of them won't even make any sense. And I'm not sure, but I think some of them lie to you. The original Zelda 2 goes up in C for me, but above the original Legend of Zelda. Like I said, I just enjoy it more and I think it's way more dynamic. Doesn't deserve all the hate it gets, honestly. Zelda 2 Redux. Just like Zelda 1 Redux, this also adds a ton of quality of life features and makes the game way less cryptic. But also, when you go to villages and towns in this one, the villagers actually give you useful information. So just that alone, I think, bumps it up to a B for me. The Legend of Zelda The Winter Solstice is another ROM hack that I'm still playing, so I have to put it in Not Finished Yet. The original A Link to the Past. Now I know what you're gonna say, but... I haven't finished it yet. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the f I know. Comment down below. Let me know how much I suck. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Redux is a ROM hack of The Link to the Past. I don't think I have to keep explaining what the Redux ROM hacks are. I only know two things about this one. One, uh, I haven't finished it. And two, they changed Link's hair from pink to blonde. The original Link's Awakening. I own it, I've started it, but I haven't finished it yet. Link's Awakening DX. I have played this, and honestly, I don't even know what the difference is between DX and Link's Awakening, the original. Let's find out. Oh, okay, I'm mistaken. I've played the DX version, I've not played the original Link's Awakening back on the Game Boy Color. I never had a Game Boy Color, but I did have a Game Boy SP. So this goes in Never Played, and this goes in Haven't Finished Yet. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX HD. You can't even get this anymore. I downloaded this just in time. It is a beautiful HD PC port of Link's Awakening that has some incredibly cool features and no loading screens. It allows you to play the entire game seamlessly and you can even pull the camera back to where you can see the entire island all at once. It's crazy and a huge labor of love and I'm so glad I have it in my collection. But oh, brother, I have not finished it yet. Guy stinks! The Link's Awakening remake for Nintendo Switch. Now I have finished this game. Wow. I love how colorful this game is and how everything just kind of looks like toys. I think my favorite thing about this game is the intro, where it's completely animated in like an anime art style. Nintendo just flexing that they could give us a Legend of Zelda animated series, but they won't. But I enjoyed it. Um, as far as gameplay, it's your standard classic Zelda affair. The story's pretty sad. Spoiler warning. Skip ahead like 30 seconds if you don't want to know. Three, two, one. The fact that this is all a dream and Link has to wake up, but when he does, everyone else will disappear because they're just part of the dream. As you play this game, you meet all these characters and become involved in their lives, and you are the one that will bring about their end. The ending of this game hits pretty hard, but I think it's a beautiful game. For me, it goes all the way to the top of B. And now we've hit a big one. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Regarded as not only one of the best Zelda games of all time, but considered an absolute masterpiece. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the game is absolute perfection, because I don't think that. The game has its flaws, sure. But as far as what I think a Zelda game should be, anytime you're trying to make a Zelda game, I think you should look at Ocarina of Time. At least when we're talking about 3D Zelda games. But this was my first Zelda game. It means a lot to me, and it is one of the saddest Zelda stories of all time. Link travels across time, saving the land of Hyrule, only to go back to a time where nobody remembers him. And if they do, it's only vague legends of a hero of time, and not necessarily him or the, or the deeds that he's done. He was never given a chance to have a childhood, and he was forced to grow up into this hero role to save the world. But also, if you're a massive fan of the Zelda timeline like me, this game is arguably one of the most important games because it splits the timeline into three. I can go on and on about Ocarina of Time, but we've got to put it somewhere on this list. And for me, I think it's a solid A. Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Alright, you're probably getting sick of hearing this. I haven't finished it yet, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I admit it, I, I suck. I, I'm still stuck on the Deku Tree. The Ocarina of Time PC port by Ship of Harkinian. In my opinion, this is like the best way to experience Ocarina of Time. Much like the Redux ROM hacks, it includes a ton of quality of life features, but also new game modes like a randomizer, Rupee Rush mode, which I really want to try out sometime, and even a two player mode where the second player gets to play as a fairy that can use Link's items. Need to zoom out a little bit here. All right, that look, that's better. Yeah, this is just a upgraded version of Ocarina of Time and it also goes in A for me. Ocarina of Time 3D. It's a beautiful remake of Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. I guess the only thing I have against it is that it's only on the 3DS. I will say that aiming your bow in this game is awesome because it has the gyro controls and you can just aim your 3DS anywhere you want. But with the greatly enhanced graphics and controls, I think that bumps it up to an S rank for me. Yeah, that's our first S rank, Ocarina of Time 3D. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time manga. If you haven't read the manga, you should read the manga. For the most part, it retreads most of the story, but it also tells parts of Link's life that we didn't get to see in the game. Parts of his childhood we never got to see. But here's the biggest difference in the manga. Link talks. He talks a lot, but I don't really mind it because it makes him really expressive. But my favorite thing about the manga is that it's graphic. Like, go over to the chapter with Valvagia. He cuts its head off. And there's blood everywhere. It's, it's, it's awesome. As far as the story, it's about the same. Maybe interpreted a bit differently than the game. But it plays it safe and hits the beats. I'm always more of a sucker for story than I am about gameplay. So this also goes in A rank. Just a little bit above the original game. Actually, it's above Ship of Arcanian too. The Legend of Zelda The Sealed Palace. This is a ROM hack of Ocarina of Time that I am still currently playing through. I will go back and finish some of these games at some point and maybe I'll redo this list. The original Majora's Mask. Now when I was a kid for the longest time, I did not know that this game existed until one day me and my mom went to a pawn shop and I saw it on the wall. Well not the game specifically, but the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition, which on the back came with Majora's Mask. I was like, wow, a new Zelda game I've never played before. Please, mom, could you please get this for me? She did, because she's awesome like that. And so my first time playing it was on the GameCube. Now, I know you can make an argument that that's probably the worst version, because the collector's edition is running an emulator, and when you open the game, it has a pop-up letting you know that some sounds won't work, and there might be some bugs and unintended glitches. But that was my first experience with it, and I went back to it recently, and it wasn't that bad, guys. But let's talk about the game itself. Majora's Mask is one of my favorite Zelda stories. It's dark and it's serious. It's probably the darkest Zelda game. Link ends up in an alternate world called Termina. The moon is falling from the sky and is gonna crush this town in three days and you've gotta stop it. But meanwhile, as you play, you get to meet almost every single person in this town. And what's most impressive even to this day is that almost every character in this town runs on a schedule. They go places, they do things, they talk to people, they have lives and you get to see how each and every one of them reacts in the face of their incoming doom. Some cower and hide, some run, some of them hold their loved ones close in their final moments, and some just accept it. But the saddest thing about this game, to me anyway, is that you're not really able to save everyone. There's just not enough time, and Link is only one guy. But what's also really impressive about this game is that most of what I've just talked about is side quests. This game is an example of how you do side quests. They're the best side quests I've played in any game. Hands down. For me, the original Majora's Mask goes up into S tier. I even like it more than Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask 3D. Like the Ocarina of Time 3D remake, this game also gets a huge boost in graphics. And it looks great, but there's an argument to be made that this game looks too bright. The colors are too vibrant for a game with this kind of tone. I just feel like the new art style didn't take into account the original game's atmosphere. Not to mention they messed up the Zora swimming. But I still think it's a great way to play Majora's Mask. But if you ask me which one I would prefer that you play, I would prefer that you play the original Majora's Mask. I still think this game is an A. Majora's Mask is still a great game. Its qualities really shine through its problems. The Legend of Zelda Mask Mask Blah, 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 blah. Masked. Qu uh, why can't I say masked? The legend is. Uh, I never learned how to read! <laughs>
The Legend of Zelda Mask Quest This is a ROM hack of Majora's Mask. It's meant to be like a master quest? I started it and I really didn't like it. Like I looked up a guide on what to do and where to go, but apparently this quote unquote master quest version of Majora's Mask requires you to do glitches? And I don't know any Majora's Mask glitches. I mean, I can probably do that glitch where like you do a crouch stab and you read a sign and then your sword slash is always on. But nah, if, if it really does rely on glitches to progress, to me, that goes into F tier. If I'm wrong and you can beat Mass Quest, oh my god, I can't say it. If I'm wrong and you can beat this ROM hack without glitches, well then it goes up to a D, but I still don't think it's great. The Majora's Mask and Link to the Past manga. I have the Legendary Edition, so they're bundled together. It didn't super blow my mind. This manga really plays it safe. It follows the beats of Majora's Mask, but it's not bad and it's a great way to go through the story of Majora's Mask. For me, this goes up to high B. I did not read the Link to the Past section of the manga. I didn't want to spoil the story for myself. The Legend of Zelda The Missing Link. This is a ROM hack of Ocarina of Time that supposedly takes place after Majora's Mask. It's a very short game, but there's new dungeons and new items and a small original story to play through. It's pretty fun. Its final boss is a little buggy, but I would say 95% of the game just works really well. And it's got a bunch of new music too, which is actually really well done. But for me, I think this goes up to high C. This next one is a big one for me. The Legend of Zelda, A Hero's Purpose. This is a fan animated series, mostly animated by one person by the name of Major Link, and the other one on music by the name of Brock Hewitt. And if you are a Zelda fan, and you love the story of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, this takes place after those games, but it's a story covering the final moments of the Hero of Time. And I can't stress this enough, it is so masterfully written and really well animated too. The animation in the first one or two episodes is a little janky, but each episode just gets better and better. The music in this show is beautiful. Now I know there's a ton, an absolute ton, of Zelda fan animations, but this one to me is so good that it's in my head canon forever. Even if Nintendo comes out with a Zelda game that is a direct sequel to Majora's Mask, I might not consider it canon, because The Legend of Zelda A Hero's Purpose is a masterful show made by someone who has a deep, deep love for not only the games, but the lore, and that can be seen from the way that the characters talk in video game text bubbles to the sound effects and the amazing attention to detail. But if you're a huge Zelda fan and you haven't seen A Legend of Zelda A Hero's Purpose, I implore you to go check it out. You will not regret it. I'll leave a link in the description. But as for where it goes on the list, it goes straight up to S rank. I know it's a show, I know it's a fan animation, but this show hits me harder than any Zelda game that has come out in a long time. This show means a lot to me. Seriously, go check it out sometime. The original Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. When I was young, my family didn't have a lot of money. Most of the games that I would play were either from pawn shops or I would borrow them from my friends. Well, one day, my friend Aaron, his mom, she bought me The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. If I could talk to her today, I would tell her thank you for leaving me with such precious memories of not only this beautiful game, but of all the times I played it with my friends. The Wind Waker. This is my favorite Zelda game of all time. Straight up to S rank. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. I have a deep connection to this game, a lot of fond memories, and every time I play this game, I smile, and it's not just because of the memories that I have attached to this game. It's the beautiful, cel-shaded art style, the adventurous and upbeat music, and some of the most expressive characters that the Legend of Zelda series has ever had. This is one of my favorite versions of Link. As we all know, Link doesn't talk, but in this game, he kind of does. Link has so many facial expressions in this game to where he is, this, this is the most expressive Link. And I really wish that every Link could be as expressive as this. Does the art style need to be cartoony to achieve that? No. I mean, just look at Skyward Sword Link. Now, I've heard criticisms 
about this game, about mainly the ocean and how for the most part it's just empty, but um, I've got to break something to you folks. The reason it's like that is because it's the ocean. I mean, I can understand. I mean, you, you get on your boat and you go and it just takes a while to get to your destination. I get it. For me, it feels like a real sense of adventure. But I think that's really thanks to the music. I don't know, as soon as I take off my boat and I hear that dun da da ba ba da ba da I don't know. It's just something magical to me. And heck, I may only feel this way because of my nostalgia, but one fact that is undeniable is that every time I come back to play The Wind Waker, it makes me smile from ear to ear the whole way through. And I think that alone is worth its S rank. Wind Waker HD for the Wii U. I uh never had a Wii U, so uh I have not played it. And it's just occurred to me that I have not addressed what games I have not played, so I will do that now. Zelda Pit Cross? No idea what that is. Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U? Never had a Wii U. Hyrule Warriors Legends? Never played it on 3DS. Zelda Game & Watch? Heard of it, never played it, don't really want to. Game Watch? Not sure what that is. Four Sword Adventures? I would love to play that. Unfortunately, there's no great way to play it. I think it came out on Switch Online, but is that... Are you able to play four-player with that? If so, I should definitely try that out with some friends. Although I think it's on the expansion pass, and the expansion pass costs a lot of money. And I really don't want to pay that. BS Legend of Zelda? I don't know what that is. And BS Ancient Stone Tablets. I also don't know what that is. Oh, that explains why I've never played this. Well, see, even if I lived in Japan around the time this came out, um, I wasn't born yet. Four Swords Anniversary Edition. I've heard this is the worst version of Four Swords, so I might want to avoid it. The Four Swords manga. I have it. I just haven't read it yet. Link to the Past and Four Swords. What is that, like a bundle? Um, I mean, I guess technically I've played those. I don't know if I've specifically had the bundle, though. The Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons uh, manga. I have it, just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. The CDI games, haven't played them, and I probably don't want to. But I have watched a lot of people like the Game Grumps play it. And I will say, its cutscenes are classic. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. Tingle's Ruby Rupee Land? I don't know if I want to play that. And yeah, I think those are all the ones I did not address. The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. I remember playing this way back on my Game Boy SP. I did finish this game a long time ago. I haven't revisited it in a long time. And this game has a villain which I think they should really bring back sometime is Vadi. But I love the premise of this game. Zelda's turned to stone, Link's got to shrink down to the size of an ant to fix the Bakori blades so that he can stop the Dark Sorcerer Vadi. But yeah, I have fond memories with this game. I like the music. I like its pixel art graphics. I would put it in B, just right below Link's Awakenings remake. It's pretty good. The Minish Cap Manga. Now, I have the Legendary Edition, so it's also bundled with the Phantom Hourglass Manga, but I haven't read the Phantom Hourglass Manga yet. Much like the Majora's Mask Manga, I think this manga just plays it a bit too safe. I mean, it's just pretty much beat for beat the exact same story. I mean, I'll put it up in B, just below the Minish Cap, because I would prefer to just play the game. The original Twilight Princess, and I'm mainly going to be talking about the GameCube version, because that's the one I first played. And it's the one that I prefer to play. So everyone knows the story about Wind Waker being too cartoony and people complained about it, and Nintendo made this. An overcorrection to be sure, but hey, I'm glad it exists because it's one of my favorite Zelda games. I wish more Zelda games had this game's serious tone, I understand, I'm not Zelda's target demographic anymore, but this was one of the few, if not the only, Zelda game to get a T rating. Hi, Tyler from the future here, and I just learned something pretty cool. So there are a couple of rated T Zelda games. All of the Dynasty Warrior ones are rated T, including Link's crossbow training? What? 
but now Majora's Mask has recently been changed to rated T. I don't know if I've ever heard of a game's rating changing over time, but yeah, when it re-released on Nintendo Switch, it was changed from E to T. I think somebody at the ESRB actually played Majora's Mask and was like, why is this rated E for everyone? <laughs> Funny. The more you know. Anyway, back to ranking Twilight Princess. But I love how dark and serious the game is, and Twilight Princess has my favorite companion, Midna. If you've seen my video, What's Missing in Modern Zelda, you probably know how much I love Midna. I miss the story being set in the present. I miss companions. I miss Midna. God, I miss Midna. Nintendo, let me have Midna again! Unfortunately, though, there's some parts of the game where I'm just not a fan of how the story is handled. I'm mainly talking about Ilya's story, or lack thereof. She's your childhood friend, she gets kidnapped, she's missing for a huge chunk of the game, you find her, she has amnesia, and then you don't really interact with her for another huge chunk of the game. She gets her memory back and then doesn't really do anything after that. I could make a whole video about this, so I'm just gonna move on. I love Twilight Princess's story, for the most part. I love its characters. I love its realistic atmosphere. It's got some cool, really cool dungeons. And I also love how it ties in with Ocarina of Time, with the hero Shade. But as for where it goes on this list, for me, Twilight Princess goes in A, right below Ocarina of Time. Twilight Princess HD. I didn't have a Wii U, and they won't port it to Switch, so I haven't played it. Links. <laughs> Oh no. Link's crossbow training. Alright, so I don't know if it's true, but I heard something one time where the Zelda team wanted to make a sequel to Twilight Princess. And then Shigeru Miyamoto said, No, we have this cool new toy called the Wii Zapper and I want to give Link a gun. I mean, they settled on a fully automatic crossbow and then we got this game. I have played it. I own two Wii Zappers. I did finish this game. It's not bad. It's not great. I think this is our first contender for D. All right, so this next one is big. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess manga. So, so far, my reviews of the manga have been alright, they're okay. Most of them play it safe, but this one, they cooked. There were some chefs in this kitchen, and they cooked. Because, to me, this is the best interpretation of Twilight Princess ever. It fixes all the problems I have with the original game's story, and this is hands down. Hands down. The best version of Link I have ever seen. Ever. They took the story seriously and expanded upon it. If you have not read this yet, read it. This shit is peak fiction. Like, this is going up all the way to the top. It's probably the best piece of Zelda fiction ever written. It's gonna be right next to the show. Like, seriously, check out the Twilight Princess manga if you haven't. It's about 11 books long, but it's totally worth it. I was satisfied from beginning to end. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I actually finished this one recently. I played a patched ROM hack. I'll actually move this up to not finished yet because I have played the original game. I just don't prefer the way it plays. I don't like moving Link with a stylus all the time. The version I played is called the D-Pad Patch. It allows me to move Link with the D-pad and attack with buttons. I still have to solve puzzles with a touchscreen, but this makes the game infinitely more replayable for me. But anyway, on to the game. So, it's a sequel to Wind Waker, and that is awesome. My only real gripe about the game is two things. One, its graphics are a step down from Wind Waker, but that's understandable because it's running on the DS. And two, the dungeons are not as complex as I would like them to be. But I will say where this game shines for me is in its puzzles. These are some of the funnest Zelda puzzles I've ever done. You can look at your map and you can mark on it with your stylus, 
to jot down clues or mark places you've been. My favorite puzzle is where I had to discover where a hole was in the ground somewhere in the village, and there were certain gravestones strewn about the island, but the hole is where the gravestones would meet. And just drawing that out and mapping it out and figuring out exactly where that hole was was like the most satisfying thing I did in the entire game. Also, I love navigating the sea by charting a course, jotting down notes where I've been and where treasure might be. It actually feels like a genuine adventure when I get to interact with the map. I don't want to put it in B, but I don't want to put it in C either. So I'm going to make a new row, C+. And that's where it goes. Spirit Tracks. This is actually currently the Zelda game that I am still playing through actively right now. So far, I love it. I love riding the train and pulling on the rope and go choo choo. Also, I think the half half human, half train people are funny looking. But the coolest thing I think about this game so far is that Zelda is your companion. Oh, and let me correct myself. I have not played the original version of Spirit Tracks. I'm playing the D-pad patch version. Same deal as Phantom Hourglass. It just feels better to play. The original Skyward Sword on the Wii. So a lot of people complain about the motion controls, and that argument was brought back up when uh, Zelda Skyward Sword HD came to the Switch. But um, here's the thing. I've recently revisited the Wii version of Skyward Sword, and I've recently beat the HD version of Skyward Sword on the Switch. And I gotta say, the Wii does motion controls better than the Switch. That's my experience. I feel like I have more control of Link's sword in the Wii version. When I play the Switch version, I prefer the newly implemented button controls because they're awesome. But let's talk about the game. So this game is a huge lore dump and it is the beginning of the Zelda timeline. That's awesome. As a, as a personal lover of Zelda lore, that is amazing. Uh, this game has one of my favorite versions of Zelda outside the cartoon. She's your childhood friend, and I love the potential kind of, like, romance there a little bit. It feels like something's there, come on. In this game, more than any other Zelda game, it really feels like there's hearts in the air, man. But I will say the problem I have with this game is that I think it's a little too long. Once I got to the part where you had to get, what was it, the three flames for the Master Sword, I was already groaning and just kind of wishing that I could just fight Demise. Oh, and speaking of Demise, that's another problem I have with this game, is that you fight the Imprisoned, which is essentially almost the same boss three times. I know he changes slightly every time, but I just, I don't think that was a good idea to just fight this same boss over and over and over. But I will say the fight after the last Imprisoned fight, where you fight Girahim, that's a cool-ass fight. That's also a cool-ass character. That's one of my favorite villains, if not my favorite Zelda villain. Hold on, let me think about it. Yeah, actually, I think Girahim is my favorite Zelda villain. I just love how, like, sinister he is. I don't know what it is about it. I mean, he's creepy, but he also kind of comes across as badass. I don't know, that's just me. But the boss fight after him, Demise, that's one of the best Zelda fights in the series. You're fighting up in the heavens against the Lord of Darkness. And the way you finish him off, I will never forget. He falls on the ground, you jump up, you do a front flip, lightning strikes your sword, and you plunge it into his chest. One of the best boss fights, hands down, probably like the second best boss fight in the entire series. But since I talked about both of these, let's go ahead and see where both of these go. I would put Skyward Sword at the top of B, the original, and I would put Skyward Sword HD in A. The reason being is because those button controls are super intuitive and it just, oh dude, it feels so good to finally play this game with button controls. Now I know the con I know the sword slashes are tied to the right stick and that's weird, but I, I adjusted super fast and it's my number one preferred way to play the game now. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Now this one is great. I have finished this game and yeah, I know that's weird. It's a sequel to The Link to the Past and I've, <laughs> yet you've played this one? But yes, I have. I have a 3DS, okay? And this is one of the best games on the 3DS. It takes place in the same world as Link to the Past. 
and Link can turn into a painting. And the way they use that is like, it's all really well thought out. Like it feels like they thought of everything. Like there's really no way to cheat the system with this, with this power. And it's a really cool power too. I love the way that you explore the world with it. Or I guess I should say explore the worlds because there are two worlds. There's Hyrule and there's Low Rule. Oh, one thing I should mention, the rent system is probably one of the best ways you could implement freedom in a classic Zelda game. Like when everybody thinks freedom, like absolute freedom, everybody thinks Breath of the Wild. But A Link Between Worlds allows you to play any dungeon in any order that you wanted because of the rent system. You could take any item from any of those dungeons at any time and then play those dungeons in any order. But yet the story was still strewn along in a certain path, so there was no chance you could experience the story out of order. When people talk about the classic 3D Zelda games, they think that they're super restrictive, and for the most part, they're right, right? And But they, they kind of clump this among them, and it's not entirely true. There's a lot of freedom in this game. But anyway, I'm kind of going off at a tangent, and we need to place this somewhere. I would put it right below the original Skyward Sword, just because I'm a big story fan and would prefer to have a more heavier emphasis on my Zelda stories. But yeah, high B. I think that's a good spot for it. The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Oh boy. I did give this one a shot, and it's it's just not for me, man. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just not a fan of the way it plays. I'm going to put not finished yet, but I probably won't ever finish it. <laughs> Cadence of Hyrule. Now this is a spinoff, and you know, we don't get a lot of those, especially this, what, right? Nintendo placed it in the hands of an indie developer who made a uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. And I did play Crypt of the Necrodancer, and I got to the final boss, and I just couldn't finish it. It was, ah, uh, it, it's a really hard game. And this is no different. This is a really hard, like, I'm not great at rhythm games. Man, I'm not great. I'm, I'm sure my nephew could, he's really good. But not me. And as, and I, but I will, I will say the biggest positive from this game, uh, two, two of them actually, two big positives, um, just from the little bit that I've played. Uh, this game looks amazing, first off, but also this game sounds amazing. The, the album, the soundtrack of this game is incredible. I love all the remixes of all this classic Zelda music, but also kind of mixing it in a little bit with Crypt of the Necrodancer music. And it's, oh, it's so good. It's, it's, a, it's a delight to the ears. So just based off the little bit that I've played and uh, I've listened to the whole soundtrack, uh, I'm going to move it up into uh, C+. Right below the game that I've actually played. But just from the music and from the aesthetic, I love it. <sighs> I want to be fair. It's got to go when not finished yet. Because I'm sure a lot of these games are great. And a lot of these games do look great and play great, but it's the fact that I haven't finished it yet, so I, I gotta be fair to games that I haven't finished. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Now, okay, I'm not a super big Dynasty Warriors fan, but if you give me a game where I can play with a huge roster of Zelda characters fighting armies of Zelda enemies, and I can even play as the villains, in this big, multi-universal clash. I mean, sure, I don't want that in any other Zelda game, but I'll accept it this one time because it was a fun little romp. I think I put over 100 hours into it. I'm not entirely sure. I did play it a lot, and my favorite character was Girahim. I finished the story, and there's a ton, and I mean a ton, of side content in this game. I might have spent like 20, 30 hours in the side content, but once I finished the story, I was pretty much done. I just wanted to see what the story was, as silly as it is. But I do think it's pretty good and deserves to go up into B. Lower B, because it's not my kind of Zelda game, but I still had a lot of fun with it. All right, everyone, we hit a big one. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When this game came out, it completely blew my socks off. It was so different from any other Zelda. Forgive my pun, but it was a breath of fresh air. The amount of freedom you have in this game is staggering. I think I have over like 300 hours in this game. But I do think it's one of the greatest Zelda games of all time, with the best exploration of any Zelda game. But the thing I love about this game's exploration is that you have to be very imaginative, because you have a limited amount of tools that you have to work with. 
and I just love the way you have to in interact with the environment and the enemies with what little you have. The only thing I have against this game is that its story leaves a lot to be desired. And its final boss. Not the first phase. The first phase of Ganon is pretty awesome. The second phase where he actually turns into Ganon. Ganon Ganon. Big Pig Ganon. Like, he just kind of stands there, and you shoot him with light arrows, and he just takes it until he dies. And that's the end of the game. Now, it might be on me for over-preparing. Like, I brought a bunch of powerful weapons. I was wearing the Fierce Didi outfit to increase my attack power. I, I might have over-prepared. But heck, man, the fight should have challenged me more, man. Or at least moved around. I mean, you're standing in one place, my dude. Anyway. I think Breath of the Wild is undeniably an s rank game. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Now, I want to judge the game for what it is, and not try to judge it too much on what I wanted it to be. Because what I wanted it to be, like, this was supposed to be our Star Wars Rogue One, right? Because everyone knows what happened in Breath of the Wild. The champions, they all died, they all fought to the best of their ability, but they didn't make it, and they lost. And that's what I wanted to see, was I wanted to see the battle, the, the battle that they allude to so many times in Breath of the Wild, and I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to see what happened. I wanted to see us lose, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Nintendo didn't have the balls. They didn't go through with it. They made it an alternate universe where we won that battle. And I don't know, it just kind of feels shallow. And I was super, super disappointed that we won. No, I wanted to be sad. I wanted us to lose. And that's not what we got. But let's be fair and let's judge the game for what it is. It's a Dynasty Warriors Zelda set in the world of Breath of the Wild. It's got an okay story. We get to see young versions of, what's your name? Pura, Pura, and Empa too. We get to see young Empa. That was really cool. That was probably my favorite character. But beyond that, it doesn't really do anything else for me. Like I said, I'm not really a huge Dynasty Warriors fan. And it doesn't have anywhere near the amount of content that Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition does. And I would prefer to play that. So I think this goes up right beside Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Just below it. Um, well, no. Okay, no. No, it's kind of a C plus for me. I don't know, it's just my disappointment. Like, I, I wanted to be fair. I, I want to be fair and just judge the game what it is. But I cannot get over the disappointment that I had after finishing it. I had fun playing up to that point, but that was it, man. It, uh, I'm sorry, I gotta move on. The Legend of Zelda... Tears of the Kingdom. It's a sequel to Breath of the Wild, but the biggest problem I have with it is that I, I feel like too much time was spent on the crafting system because, I don't know, the crafting system doesn't really play a huge role in the story, but that's what I care about in my Zelda games. I care about the lore, I care about the story, and gameplay here is very fun. But the gameplay here doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like Zelda. It feels so far removed. And it's like, oh, well, it's just it's Breath of the Wild, right? Just expanded. No, Breath of the Wild, like I said, that limited arsenal to me is everything. Because Zelda's all about having a limited amount of tools and solving puzzles with what you got on you. And Tears of the Kingdom, you could make an unlimited arsenal, unlimited toolbox, to solve, to make any problem, any puzzle, any dungeon, trivial. And okay, I'm, I'm not gonna retread a lot of what I said. I have a whole video covering this. What's missing in Modern Zelda? I have a whole video talking about it. I don't like the way they handle the story because you can accidentally experience the story out of order and be spoiled. But I watched a video on how to get the memories in order. So that didn't happen to me, luckily. I thought the story was okay. Exploring the world is not as fun, not as interactive, 
because so much of it can just be skipped. I know you don't have to. You don't have to use a flying bike to fly over everything, but if that is the most optimal way to get to the destination that I'm trying to get to, why would I ever bother building a race car? Why would I ever bother, especially why would I ever bother riding a horse? I don't think I ever even touched a horse. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, but okay, I also gotta say some good things because I've just been ranting. The number one greatest thing that came from this game, in my opinion, is that it has probably the greatest final boss in a Zelda game ever, hands down. Like seriously, I, I feel like I was over preparing myself like I was in Breath of the Wild, but no, I was not ready. First off, you have to fight Ganon's army. The first time I did it, I didn't have all the sages, so I had to fight Ganon's army. And then I had to fight the boss from, what was it, the fourth, fifth sage? Then then we start fighting Ganondorf. And then Ganondorf just kicked my ass. I came into the fight with a Hylian shield, and he can break that shit in just like five or six hits. It's, it's insane. Well, I mean, like when he's powered up, he can break it very easily. If you don't come prepared for that fight, you will not win. And then, one of the coolest parts is that he eats the dragon stone and then he ascends into the heavens as a dragon and you go up there and you ride on another dragon and you just and you fight him in the sky and it's it, oh dude it's it's so cool it's so cool and the ending oh, was so emotional and i love it but that that's that's all i really got to say about that because like the ending of the game is it's like top tier but I wish most of the game was like that. But let's go ahead and rank this final game. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, to me, gets a B rank right below A Link Between Worlds. It's a, it's a good game, it's a great game. And especially if it's your first Zelda game, you know, you're gonna really enjoy it. But going from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom, you're gonna feel like you're in mostly just retreading the same world I mean, there are a lot of new additions, right? There's the underground, and there's a lot of new stuff to do up on the surface. But most of that, you're just gonna fly over. You're not gonna be walking on the ground, you're not gonna be experiencing what's there. You're gonna be trying to do trick shots on a motorcycle, or a, fl a flying a jet, I don't know. And the underground leaves a lot to be desired. It's pretty empty, and you can't see half of it. I mean, you're supposed to light it up as you go, but... It's new, but it, it feels... It kind of feels last minute. The underground feels last minute to me. And you have to go under there to get Zonite to craft your stuff and... Really, that's another game I, I problem I have with the game is that it feels grindy. But yeah, that's, that's my list. How long have we been recording? Oh my gosh, we've been recording for over two and a half hours. That's insane. Going into this, I did not think that it would take anywhere near this long. I'm going to be editing for a long time. Hey, Tyler from the future here. Just wanted to let you know that, yeah, this took well over 80 plus hours. So a like, subscribe, comment, that will be well appreciated. Thank you. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. It really helps. Leave a comment, leave a like. It really boosts the video up to see, for other people to come and see it. The more views the video gets, the more I want to make more videos. Also, if you're watching this when Echoes of Wisdom is out, let me know what you think of it. I'm going to be playing it right alongside you. Though not literally right beside you, that would be weird. <laughs>